all right good morning uh, so today we will study discrete probability spaces okay so these are the easiest and nicest kind of <coughs> probability spaces to work with okay uh, they are very simple and i think most of you would have already know what i'm going to say right these are the simplest and nicest kind of probability spaces to work with this corresponds to uh, the case where omega the sample space is countable okay either finite or countably infinite okay so here this corresponds to omega is countable and when omega is countable we can always take f is equal to 2 power omega okay so we can afford to take the set of all possible subsets of the sample space as the sigma algebra all right and in fact we will be able to assign probabilities to all subsets of the sample space okay so in the case of discrete probability uh, all all subsets of omega are necessarily are in fact events right i said earlier that in general not all subsets of the sample space are considered events right only the ones in the sigma algebra f are events in our case we are taking f is equal to 2 power omega right so all subsets of omega are events and we will assign probabilities to all subsets of omega okay so the way you assign probabilities so now i have to tell you how i assign probabilities right so in the case of uh, a countable sample space we assign probabilities to each subset of omega via probabilities assigned to singletons okay so if you have uh, so in this case your omega will look like it will either look like omega 1 omega 2 dot 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 omega n finite sample space or it will look like omega 1 omega 2 dot 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 right uncountably uh, infinite right so in in both these cases when in both these cases any subset of omega you assign probability by in fact assigning probabilities to singletons okay i'll write that down the probability of each a which is a subset of omega is defined in terms of the probabilities p of omega omega i or whatever no let me let me just call it p of omega of the singletons subsets of the singleton subsets and probability of a is simply given by sum over omega belonging to a probability of omega so this is this should also be satisfied right so probability of this assignment should satisfy this assignment should satisfy p of omega sum over all omega in omega equal to 1 
Okay. So you have a countable sample space and you would always take f equal to 2 power omega, you can afford to do that and assign probabilities to all subsets of omega. All right. So given any subset A of omega, you can assign probabilities and the way you do that is to assign probabilities to all singletons. Okay. So omega will look like that. Right. So you assign probabilities to each of these singletons. <coughs> Okay. In other words, you are assigning uh, probabilities to each of these el elementary outcomes. See, uh, I told you earlier that probabilities are always assigned to, they are never assigned to elements of omega, they are always assigned to elements of f, right. But in discrete spaces, it looks as though you are assigning probabilities to each one of these elementary outcomes. That is not technically correct. In fact, you are assigning probabilities to, sub, uh, to elements of f only, but it is the singleton element omega, it is not, you are not assigning probability to omega 1, you are assigning probability to the singleton set containing omega 1, that is the correct interpretation, right, which is why some, this is why some students are sometimes confused, you assign probabilities to elements of omega or elements of f, you always assign probabilities to elements of f, right. In this specific case of discrete probability spaces, it looks as though you are assigning probabilities to elements of omega, it is true and not true. So, it is when you say p of omega you actually mean the singleton omega all right. So, you are still assigning probabilities to elements of f okay. So, sometimes you abuse notation by, so technically you should write a curly brace here to denote the fact that it is a set singleton set right, but then you start abusing notation and forget this curly braces. So, even when I write p of omega without the curly braces, I do mean that it is a singleton set, it is not the element of omega that I am talking about, it is the element of f I am talking about. Okay. And given any subset A of uh, given any subset A of the sample space, the probability of A is determined by the summation omega belonging to A and just add up those probabilities because A can be written as a union of the singletons and it is a countable union. So, you have to have the singletons are disjoint. So, you have to have countable additivity satisfied. So, P of A is equal to the sum of the probabilities of the elements in that A. Right? So, if, so, if you have something like this, if your A simply consists of omega 2 and omega 3, probability of A will be probability of omega 2 plus probability of omega 3, that is it again by probability of omega 2 I mean the singleton omega 2 right, it is not the element omega 2. Is this clear? Finally, I must have that the probabilities that I assign must sum to 1 because after all uh, this is nothing but again countable relativity right, because if you take union of all the singletons right. So, actually this is nothing but uh, probability of union, see the sample space itself is a union of singletons, countable union of singletons, after all this omega is countable, right. Uh, so, these are disjoint, so it should, should become that sum, right. So, and this is equal to 1 we know, right, because this is nothing but the sample space itself, right. So, this should be satisfied. Right. So, that is all there is to it. So, in uh, 10 minutes you can finish saying what is a discrete sample space. You will just take f is equal to 2 power omega and you assign probabilities to each subset of omega by in fact assigning probabilities to each sub singleton and if you are looking at some non singleton subset A, the probability of A is determined by adding up all the probabilities of each of the singletons in that A. Correct? You should only take care that the sum of all these probabilities that you assign to singletons must be 1, right. And any such probability space omega comma 2 power omega comma p which satisfy all this is a discrete probability space, it is a valid discrete probability space, okay. Any questions? It is not necessary, see uh, the question is is it 
is it necessary that f is equal to 2 power omega right. See the thing is whenever possible you would like to keep all your subsets of omega right why do you want to throw away something right. If the reason that you cannot do the reason that you cannot always take f equal to 2 power omega is because when omega is uncountable we will see that case uh, then f equal to 2 power omega turns out to be 2 biggest sigma algebra to assign probabilities to all each and every subset right that becomes actually it is mathematically impossible for uh, in certain circumstances. But in discrete probability cases this problem never arises which is why when you study elementary probability courses you never make this a big deal right you always assign you think that all subsets of omega are in fact events right. So, that is this easy case this is the case you already know right you can assign probabilities to all subsets of omega right which means you can afford to take f equal to 2 power omega and assign probabilities to all subsets of omega which is in some sense the best thing you can hope for right you do not want to throw out any subset as uninteresting right because you can keep it and still do a consistent uh, probability space on it correct. Uh, when omega is uncountable this is not possible. So, we have to settle for a sigma algebra which is not 2 power omega we have to settle for something smaller, but still keep interesting subsets in it right. So, that is something we will get to in a little bit. Uh, so, far uh, so far we are just saying that when omega is countable you can afford to take f as 2 power omega and assign probabilities to all subsets ok. Is this clear? So, again uh, this does not tell you how to assign probabilities right it should only satisfy this assign probabilities to singletons such that this is satisfied that is all there is right and any such assignment is in fact a valid discrete probability space, but what assignment makes sense for your experiment depends on again what you are interested in modeling and capturing right. So, if you are for example, so if you go back to our so if you go back to our coin tossing and you are interested in the face showing up heads or tails. Uh, this is a finite sample space right there are only two outcomes and you, you take f equal to 2 power omega. So, f equal to 2 power omega so means what will it contain it will contain null omega itself the singleton h singleton t right that you can write out. So, you will assign probabilities to each of the singletons h and t and you have to make it such that. So, you, you want you want to assign probability of singleton h and probability of singleton t such that they sum to 1 right any such assignment is a valid assignment. So, you can take uh, so probability of h right. So, that is like my probability of little omega here right. So, this you can take it to be some p where and probability of tail must be 1 minus p ok. This, this p can be anything between 0 and 1 ok. Any such assignment is a valid probability space. Now, probability uh, it does not tell you what this little p should be right and nothing of what we have done says what this little p should be that should be governed by your practical experience or whatever you know. So, if if you suspect that your coin that you are tossing is a fair coin and it shows up roughly half the times is heads you should put p equal to little p equal to half. If you suspect that your coin is slightly biased towards being a head you should put p is something greater than a half right. So, that is something governed by what you think what you are interested in and what you think the coin is likely to do you know. So, this is not so probability theory does not tell you what the probability of a coin turning up head is it does not ok. So, that is something you have to supply to the theory, but once you supply that to the theory it will the theory helps you calculate other probabilities of other complicated events right it will. So, it will be able to tell you if you toss a coin 1000 times what is the probability of getting 600 heads 
okay, those things you can calculate once you make the assignment, but you have to make the assignment in the first place. Is that clear? So, it is your responsibility to determine this little p. If you think it is a fair coin, you will put p equal to half. So, this is a we have put a measure, right? We have put a measure on this discrete sample space. And a more, I mean, a little more complicated example will be to take an n phase die 1, 2, 3 n, again f is equal to 2 power omega, and you can put probability of i equal to pi, any pi you want such that sum over pi is 1, right? That is like an n phase die, and if it is a fair n phase die, you will take pi equal to 1 over n. Right? If it is an n phase die and if you think it is fair, you will put 1 over n. If it is not fair, you will put something else, but you have to sum to 1. Right? So, let me give you some more. So, let us look at another example. Uh, what do I have here? Uh, let us look, let's look at a countably infinite sample space omega equal to n. Okay. So, that looks like that, right. Again, I will take blindly, I will take f is equal to 2 power omega, right. Whenever omega is countable, I will take f equal to 2 power omega, okay. So, now I have to assign probabilities to all subsets of natural numbers. Remember, remember there is an uncountable infinity of this f is has uncountably infin infinite number of subsets, but it does not matter. I am saying that omega should be countable, that is all. f can be uncountable, does not matter, right. So, in this case, uh, I want to assign some probabilities. So, uh, what will I do? I will assign probabilities to singletons, right. What are the singletons here? Huh, so, the natural numbers themselves, right. So, to each natural number k, uh, yeah, assign p k for each k equals 1, 2 dot 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 such that sum over k equal to 1. Right. Again, I am assigning probabilities to the singletons, which are elements of omega. Right? Singletons, which are uh, singleton subsets of omega. Okay. Can you think of any such assignment? So this is all you need to satisfy. Right. So one such so one such assignment is this. Right. you can put probability of k equals 1 over 2 power k for k equals 1 2 dot 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 right so probability of 1 will be half probability of 2 will be 1 by 4 and so on right you can verify that this sums to 1 right this is a geometric series that sums to 1 uh, this is an example of a valid probability measure on the natural numbers. Okay. Or more generally you can or, or more generally you can write probability of k another such assignment you can write p power k. 1 minus p is that is that is that a valid thing k my k or k minus 1 so normally actually we write k minus 1 here let's write 1 minus p k minus 1 p right k equals 1 2 dot dot right that's it also sums to 1 right so, that is examples, right? These are not, this is, this does not have to be the only way you can put a measure. I am just giving an example of a valid probability measure, okay.
So, these are valid measures on natural numbers. This measure is called a geometric measure okay, on natural numbers. Yet another example. Uh, you take omega equal to whole numbers, okay, and again your f is whole numbers are countable, right? So it, then you take omega equal to f is equal to two power omega. And you put the following measure. So you have to now assign probabilities to all singleton uh, subsets of omega, which means you have to assign probabilities to all whole numbers, right? So one such measure, this is also a very well known measure, probability of k is equal to e power minus lambda lambda power k by factorial k. This this is for k is equal to 0, 1, 2 dot 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 and lambda is something that is it's a fixed positive parameter. Okay. So, here again you can verify that if you sum this from k equal to 0 to infinity you will get the summation for e power lambda and you will get 1 right 0 factorial is 1 taken to be 1 okay so this is this is another this is a valid measure on the whole numbers right this is just an example okay you can do it you can do it whichever way you want it's just an example this is a famous measure this is called poisson measure okay on whole numbers so remember so i am just putting measures on these sets, these sample spaces, omega comma two power omega is my measurable space here, and I am putting some measure on it. All right, that's all. So, and if you want to compute the probabilities of, let's say, under this measure, if you want to compute the probabilities of all, let's say, prime numbers, what will you do? Huh, so, if you want to determine, so you want to determine the probability of primes. Let us say you will add sum over all prime numbers, this guy, right? And it is what it is, right? That is it. If you want probability of all odd numbers, you can add over k equal to 1, 3, 5, and so on. Actually, if you add over all number odd numbers, you can actually simplify it. Okay, this so you can actually simplify get an answer, closed form answer. Okay. Are there any questions? So, this is all very nice, right? This is all very nice and simple. You know all of this, I think, right? I am just couching it in the language of the sigma algebras and whatever that we have developed. Uh, just the only thing to bear in mind is that although it seems like we are assigning probabilities to each elementary outcome, we are in fact assigning probabilities to f measurable sets, but we are doing it through the root of singletons, right? And you can do this in a countable sample space. You cannot do this in an uncountable sample space. It completely collapses. Okay. No, it is no. See, you have assigned. So, if you are looking at the problem in this, in this case, yeah. or generally, uh, in this case, in this case, so probability of primes, right? Uh, this primes, right? Let me call it primes. Right, the su the subset of whole numbers which are primes. So you will simply sum over k all that, and you may you will not get a closed form answer, but it is what it is. Even if you don't get a closed form answer, also then also it's defined. It's defined. No, see the sum the summation is see this is a monotonically increasing sequence, and it's bounded above by one, so it has to converge. 
that number may not have a closed form answer. See, this closed form business is overrated, right? I mean, why is e power minus lambda closed form and something else not closed form, right? It's just our own perception on what we think are elementary functions, right? That's no big deal, right? If you submit, you get some answer. You can always do it in a computer to whatever precision you want. And this is mathematically, this is a convergent series. So this is a monotonically increasing sequence, right? If each term is non-negative, so the summation is increasing, and it's bounded above, so it has to converge to something, right? Say that it will converge below one. Uh, that it it converge to one, or you see, in this case, it it cannot converge to one because you are leaving out elements of positive probability. It is less than one. Oh, we can assume this is sum, countable sum. This is a sum over. This is a sum, and this sum, as you add more and more terms, it's monotonically <coughs> increasing, and it's bounded above by one. So it has to converge to something, right? It has to converge to something. In this case, it has to converge to something strictly less than one, because I mean there are non-prime numbers which have positive probability. Right? It is some real number. That's all you care. Doesn't matter that you do. You cannot simplify it. Right? If you are summing over odd numbers, you can actually simplify it if it gives you any comfort. But it's conceptually the same thing. Okay. Fine. So it's all very easy. Okay. So when you go to uncountable sample spaces, life is not very easy, right? That's why you need all the machinery of measure theory. Okay. Otherwise, if 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 uncountable sample spaces were as simple, probability theory would be very easy, right? There's nothing more to it. All this technical machinery of measures and the sigma algebras will be not very uh, not very necessary, right? Shall we move on to uncountable sample spaces? There are no questions on discrete sample spaces. So let's take an so let's take an example of let us say omega equal to the interval zero one. Okay, so you want to deal with this sample space, so you have this interval. Okay, and let us say you are interested. Let's take a very specific example. Let's say you are throwing darts on this line. Okay, throwing a dart on this line, it'll it'll land somewhere in this line. And you want to model mathematically the intuitive concept of the dart landing uniformly on this zero one interval. Okay, so you want to have the sense that the dart is equally likely to hit anywhere between zero and one. Okay, that is the intuitive thing we want to build up towards. Okay, <coughs> so in some sense, I want to be able to say that. If I have some set here, which I'm interested in probability of the dart landing on that set, and I move that set around here, the probability of landing on that set should also be the same, right? So in this, this is the experiment we want to model. Let us say so. Essentially, in more formal terms, we want to assign a uniform probability measure on this zero one interval. Okay, which is an uncountable. We know that zero one is uncountable, right? The interval zero one is uncountable. Now, in this case, it so happens that if you take two power zero one, two power omega, which is the set of all possible subsets of the zero one interval, it's a very huge collection of sets. It's actually you can show that two power omega 
has a strictly bigger cardinality than even the continuum the real numbers. Okay. In fact, you can the Cantor showed the theorem that all power sets have the power set of any set has a strictly bigger cardinality than the set itself. Okay. So, 2 power omega will have a strictly bigger cardinality than real numbers or 0 1. Okay. So, that is 2 bigger sigma algebra to assign probabilities to in fact, there is an impossibility result that I will state, but that gives that brings us to the problem that you cannot assign probabilities to all subsets of the 0 1 interval. Right. So, uh, one see the elementary approach of simply assigning probabilities to singletons will definitely not work because I mean if you were to assign each probability. So, let us say there is an omega here okay, between 0 and 1 if you want to assign probability to that little omega uh, well it cannot be anything positive because if you were to put a positive probability on that singleton little omega you would want to put the same probability on another singleton because you want the notion of a uniform probability measure. But then you will quickly find that there is an un uncountable infinity of these omegas and if any of them has positive probability the probability of the interval will blow up right it will go to infinite that is meaningless. So, the only thing you can do is the singleton should have 0 probability right that is the only way to make it work. But if you put 0 probability on the singletons that does not tell you the probability of an uncountable set right. Suppose, I put probability of 0 on all the singletons and I ask you what is the probability of the interval half 1. This has uncountably many singletons in it right, but you cannot add probabilities over uncountable unions you can only add them over countable unions right. So, even if I assign 0 probability to each of these singletons I am not able to figure out what the probability of let us say an interval half 1 is right, because I have to add the probabilities of these I mean I cannot add the probabilities of these uncountably infinite sets unions right. Okay, so, this is a problem. <coughs> so, the way out of this is to not stop worrying about singletons the idea is to directly assign probabilities to sets we consider interesting subsets of omega we consider interesting. Okay. So, abandon singletons altogether for un uncountable sample spaces we will only say that for example, intuitively we would like to say that the probability of my dart landing in this interval half 1 should be what 1 by 2 I want it right uh, that is that is that is what I want. So, similarly if I have some interval a b or something I want the probability of the dart landing there should be b minus a right that is what I want right, but of course I have to define the proper sigma algebra and so on and assign the measures properly. So, this requires some work okay, this stumped a lot of mathematicians for a few centuries okay, it was only sorted out in early 1900s by Borel, Lebeg and all right. So, this is all this business is only 100 years old okay. people have been studying probability for several centuries, but this this proper theory uh, consistent mathematical theory particularly for uncountable sample spaces is only 100 years old. Okay. So, okay. so, we want this, so we want a measure right So, we want the measure of the whole thing is 1 of course, but then we want measures of let us say intervals like that a b to be b minus a and so even if I move it around I want it to be equal to the length right. So, this is what we want want. So, I want to put a measure mu or probability measure p such that mu of the interval a b equal to mu of interval a b equal to mu of 
a b equal to mu of a b closed all of this equal to I want it to be proportional to b minus a right. So, this what am I saying here I am just saying that the dart landing in open a b or close j b or half open half close is all equal to they are all equal right because I want to I do not want to say that a dart landing a dart landing at some point that, that should be probability 0 right as I just argued. I want this property okay, and I want the property of translational invariance. Uh, so, if I have uh, a which is a subset of 0 1. So, if I give you a subset of 0 1 right I want my measure mu. So, the uniform I am trying to define a uniform measure mu satisfying certain properties one of them is translational invariance. I want mu of a equal to mu of a plus x where a plus x is the set of all little a plus x such that a belongs to a and a plus x is now equal to 1. Union a plus x minus 1 that a belongs to a and a plus x greater than 1. So, this is complicated notation for something very simple I will tell you what it is. So, this a o plus this uh, o plus x is simply the translation of the set by uh, some fixed number x. So, if I give you a set some set and I move it by x okay, that is what this is saying except if you move a set by a certain x it can go outside 1 in that case you wrap it back okay, that is what this business is doing. So, if your a plus x is less than or equal to 1 uh, you are happy if not you wrap it back right you subtract 1 and bring it back here right. So, this is the translational invariant property invariance property. So, I want my uniform measure to satisfy these two properties. Okay, this is the I want a measure which satisfies these properties, right? Uniform measure to satisfy these properties. Okay. So, I am demanding that my intervals have a measure right a b intervals of the form a b have a measure and that open or close should not matter the measure should be the same and I, I also demand that for any subset a not necessarily intervals it, it must have the translational invariance property. If I demand these two things which is perfectly reasonable for a uniform measure it turns out you cannot do this on 2 power omega okay. there is an impossibility theorem. So, there is an impossibility result. So, this is something I will only state uh, the proof of it is uh, beyond the scope of our class I will not hold you responsible for it I will only state what it says. Okay. It simply states that there exists no such measure on 2 power omega. Okay. There does not exist a definition of so okay i should say there does not exist a measure there does not exist a measure mu a defined on 
2 power omega i.e. all sets of all subsets of 0 satisfying one and two above. Okay. So this is a this is a theorem that is proved for example Rosenthal has a proof of this, the book by Rosenthal has a proof of this. But the proof is, proof is by contradiction. You assume that there exists a measure on uh, 2 power omega and construct and show that one of the axioms of the measures will not hold. Okay. So, it is a proof by contradiction, but it is it's not uh, very important for us. So, what is important for us is to simply know that you cannot these very perfectly intuitive properties that you like uniform measure to satisfy cannot be satisfied on 2 power omega. You cannot possibly assign measures to all subsets of 0 1 satisfying the axioms of measure and satisfying these two properties. So, in plain English it is impossible to assign a uniform probability measure on 0 1 satisfying some very simple properties like this say very intuitive properties. Okay. See there are other impossibility results as well, there are other impossibility results that say that this is only talking about an uniform measure right. So, there are certain large class of continuous measures which can never be defined on uh, uncountable on 2 power omega. Okay. So, all this just means that we have to what should we what we have to do now? We have to compromise on our sigma algebra right. So, we, we could very happily take 2 power omega as our sigma algebra for discrete probability spaces, but when omega is uncountable 2 power omega is a luxury we cannot afford right. So, we have to work with a smaller sigma algebra, but still we have to figure out a way of retaining subsets that are of interest to us right. So, I, I will get to the details next class, but what essentially uh, these uh, early pe pe people who developed the foundations of measure theory what they did is that I want to keep interesting subsets, I cannot keep all subsets. So, I have to keep interesting subsets. So, if you take a real line or 0 1 interval or something like that, people decided that the interesting subsets are the intervals. Okay. So, I want to keep a smaller sigma algebra than 2 power omega. So, I want to create a sigma algebra that is smaller than 2 power omega, but contains all the intervals okay, intervals of the form a b right. And so, you decide to include your intervals in your sigma algebra. So, now you include intervals you also have to include complements, countable union of intervals and so on right. So, that is what led to this concept of a Borel sigma algebra and the sigma algebra the elements of the sigma algebra are called Borel sets. Okay. That is the word you might have heard right. So, sounds familiar to some yeah. So, that is so Borel sets are interesting subsets of 0 1 interval for example. Uh, so, they Borel says intervals are all Borel sets and all countable unions and countable intersections and complementations of intervals also are Borel sets. Okay. So, that is what we will build up towards next class we will deal with this more formally. Okay. So, are there any questions at this point? So, I will stop with the impossibility result for today. Uh, so we will prove that singleton sets are Borel sets. Okay, so I have not got into it yet. That's the result we will prove. Any other question? Okay.
Thanks.